Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at a dialyzer again, but in this case the blood and the dialysate are flowing. In the last video, if you'll remember, we had no flow. In a real dialysis machine, the blood and the dialysate are flowing past each other through the dialyzer. So today's uh, model is going to be a lot more realistic. So to start, let's consider a small area of that filter membrane and we'll label it DA. And on one side, blood is flowing with a rate QB. On the other side, dialysate is flowing with a rate QD. This is called a co-current or parallel flow dialyzer because, as you see, the blood and the dialysate are flowing in the same direction. In lab, you might have a co-current dialyzer or you might have a counter-current dialyzer in which the blood and the dialysate are moving in different directions. And some of the equations we work out today will be slightly different. We'll look at those in workshop. So, what's going to happen here? Well, uh, assuming we have uh, a concentration of solute in the blood, and a concentration of solute in the dialysate that are different, we're going to have a mass transfer. And since we're looking at just a small area here, the amount of mass transferred is also going to be very small. And so we have a change in concentration in the blood and a change in concentration in the dialysate. So there's our basic model that we're going to look at. So first, let's think about what we do know. Well, we know uh, the flux from last time, and flux is just mass transferred per unit area. So in our case, we can look at dW dA, and that is equal to KCB minus CD, or that little bit that's transferred is equal to K, the difference in concentration times dA. Well, we can also write dW in terms of the flow and this change in concentration. And so on the dialysate side, we have the flow rate of the dialysate times that small change in the concentration. And that's also going to be equal to minus the flow rate on the blood side times the cha little change in concentration on the blood side. And the minus sign is just because, of course, the solute is moving from the blood into the dialysate. So let's look at these uh, two equations here, um, three equations really, and rearrange them. So first we'll write dCB over CB minus CD equals K times over QB times dA. Oh, and I forgot a minus sign. And we can also write dCD over CB minus CD. In this case, we don't need a minus sign. So there we go. Let's combine these two equations, um, and then we're going to do an integration. So uh, we're going to integrate over the entire area to figure out um, the entire mass transfer rate. So if we do that, we end up with, combining the two equations, we end up with something that looks like this. And then we have K, and then 1 over the QB, and 1 over QD times DA. So we want to integrate this, and we're going to integrate from the inlet side to the outlet side. And when I do that, we're going to end up with a natural log because of this term, right? So we're going to end up with natural log of the difference in concentration at the outlet over the difference in concentration at the inlet, and that's Ka. 1 over the flow rate in blood plus 1 over the flow rate in dialysate. So you can look at this equation and think about the things that you'll need to measure in lab in order to measure the filter coefficient for the solute that you're studying, either urea or salt. 
we can look at this equation um, and do a little bit more manipulation in order to get a, uh, an equation for the total mass transferred. In order to do that, we're going to use the fact that the total mass transfer, uh, for example, in the blood, is equal to the flow rate in blood times the change in concentration. Or the change in the dialysate. Right? And so if we do that and we, we plug in for QB and QD into this piece right here, what we can end up with then is, an, uh, again, our equation for W. And so I'm skipping some algebra here, uh, but hopefully you can check my work. And we end up with the difference in concentration on the inlet minus the difference in concentration at the outlet of the dialyzer over that natural log piece that we have there. So now, assuming we can measure all of these concentrations, uh, we can figure out the total mass transferred in the dialyzer. One uh, or two more measurements of interest when looking at a, a dialyzer uh, are the clearance, and that's denoted C, and that's just equal to the blood flow rate times the change in concentration in the blood over the concentration on the inlet. Uh, again, we can make that substitution on the top in the numerator and get that. So this is the amount of blood that is totally cleared of solute um, in a given time. And that's the clearance. Another interesting measure to describe a dialyzer is called the extraction ratio. And the extraction ratio is simply the change in concentration in the blood over the difference in the inlet concentrations. And so this is a ratio, it's unitless, but it's attempting to say that, look, this, this change is the biggest change that could be accomplished in this dialyzer. How much change here in the numerator did we actually accomplish? So it should just be a number from zero to one for a given flow rate. So, uh, in workshop, as I said, we'll look at the case where we don't have a co-current dialyzer and we'll find another equation for extraction ratio that uh, you can actually use to, in lab to collect data and, and, and to get a number for this. Thanks.